NBC 10 News starts now. We begin tonight with new details on how police identified the boy in the box. Thanks for joining us tonight at 6. I'm Jim Rosenfield. So the NBC 10 investigators have continued to look into this infamous Philly cold case. And investigative reporter Claudia Vargas is here with how police worked with a forensic genealogist as well as a nonprofit organization to solve this decades old mystery. Claudia. Right, Jim. Well, this investigation started with traditional shoe leather detective work, checking with orphanages and hospitals. But in the end, it was new technology that gave police the name of the boy in the box. It's like I'm going to see my kid brother after years and years and years not knowing where he was. That's the reaction from former federal agent Bill Fleischer to the news that police have identified the boy in the box. Fleischer was 13 at the time the boy in the box was found dead, wrapped in a blanket inside a cardboard box, and left off the side of a road in the city's Fox Chase neighborhood. Every time I heard the word Fox Chase, I thought it, I didn't think of Fox Chase. I saw that little boy's picture. Fleischer went on to be the co-founder of the VDOC Society, a volunteer organization made up of retired law enforcement and forensic professionals who examine cold cases. The society has been instrumental in the boy in the box case, but he says it was a team effort. I would like to congratulate the Philadelphia Police Department, the Office of the Medical Examiner, Dr. Colleen Fitzpatrick and her team, and all the VDOC members that worked to uh, help and assist in any way we could in this case. Fleischer says a few years ago, the society helped arrange for one of its members, Dr. Colleen Fitzpatrick, to be involved in the case. Fitzpatrick is a renowned forensic genealogist. Worked on many, many uh, cases that are well known. Once a good DNA sample had been extracted from the child, Fleischer said Fitzpatrick was able to match the boy's profile to potential relatives. They feed that to the police department and the police department runs those leads out. Then, police had to track down those potential relatives. Knocking on doors, talking to people. Once police were confident they had an ID for the boy known as America's unknown child, they notified Fleischer. I don't cry much now. But my wife and I cried the other night <laughs> when I told her. And Fleischer tells us he doesn't actually know the name of the boy, but he's looking forward to learning it when police release it at a planned news conference next week. This has been such a long time. Are police going to be able to perhaps share more about what happened to the boy? So according to what Fleischer told us, they're still working on that, but they're pretty close to determining what actually happened to him. And when we think about the timeline, more than 60 years has passed. What are the chances of an arrest of somebody who may still be out there? It's possible. So when we spoke with the homicide captain, Philly police homicide captain overseeing the investigation, he said once they have the identity, they would go back, start from zero, investigating again to try to find a suspect. And obviously, if they find one and that person's still alive, go through with an arrest. So We know you'll continue to follow up, Claudia. Thank you. Thank you.